and you're live. We are live, Carrie. Oh, hello. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello Will. Um, well, I'm Yvette, and that's Carrie. Um, and we are here to share a bit about um, this crazy idea that we have for an embodied performance. But before we get started, let me just, um, oh, hold it. I didn't break. Um, let me just say, so I said, my name is Yvette DeBell and I'm an artist researcher in residence with We The World, coordinating the Freedom Campaign. And We The World is a global coalition building organization with 11 campaigns to transform the world. Mine is freedom. And you can learn more and take action with us by going to we.net. And to volunteer for one of my projects specifically, be sure to select Freedom Campaign. Um, and we also happen to have a few internship openings, if that's something that you're interested in, um, in addition or in, in, instead of just volunteering. Um, and that includes internships, new internship space spots for the upcoming We Freedom Film Fest, which is a virtual short film festival that aims to attract and inspire filmmakers to make films that help us understand um, and imagine a world, you know, a future that is better than our past. And what a we society looks like, what that means, and having different voices of perspectives, um, basically, you know, chiming in uh, to help inform that. And so that will be starting in September. Well, I'm sorry, the film festival is actually in September, but we'll start planning that next month. So if that's something of interest to you, please, please do connect with us. We would love to hear from you. Um, and so Carrie and I both said hi, but we have a little introduction that we prepared for you ahead of time. So we are going to start with that. You ready, Kaylin? <laughs> I'm a fellow human being, Kelly, and I'd like to introduce to my fellow human being, Yvette, who Hello. Is, is the host of this event. So I'm going to introduce Yvette, let int Yvette introduce herself and what, what this event is all about and why. And uh, I'll let you tell her more about that. But so Yvette, in introduce yourself to, to the people, please. Um, okay, well, I am Yvette Dubell, and as Carrie said, she's Carrie, Carrie Santo. Um, and Carrie and I have been friends for a long time. And uh, she was one of the first people that I wanted to share this idea with. Um, and so on the one hand, this is an, an, a, an extension, I guess, of the work I've been doing with We The World uh, for the, uh, I, I was part of our celebration of global unit for, for now, edit that out. Okay, this is part of the Freedom Campaign's uh, contribution to Global Unity Week. It's an embodied performance based on, um, I have to say decades of work now, um, exploring innovative paths to solutions to intractable problems. This particular event is responding to the wave of um, anti-freedom, anti-democratic sort of political move that we see happening and looking at how we can learn from other areas of innovation and adapt those models to be applied here to um, social innovation and social response to political oppression. And um, Carrie, this ties into the work that we first connected around back in... So if you if you sometimes like me, you know, I'm gonna wait understood the way she said, just come and see what's what. <laughs> That's there what you go. <laughs> there you go. That's it. You don't have to know. This is all no, about I... not knowing. All I know is that these are the questions. <laughs> Look, 
2007, 2006. I don't know. Do you know the year? I don't remember the year. It might, it might have been about 2003-ish, maybe. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. a long wow. time ago. So way back when, um, and so I was working with Ron Price with uh, a project and an, a movement, an art-based response um, called Cultural Fusion. And we were looking at this core idea of radical inclusion. And I think that was about the time that Carrie and I met. And uh, we were looking to create, we were developing a sort of a mythology. We we're looking to develop a gaming, a virtual world. Um, and we were imagining this virtual world where we could prototype solutions for real world problems. And the context for that was Cultural Fusion Hotel Infinity. And we described it as, um, a version of the Hotel Infinity, which is a mathematical concept uh, developed for the wild west of the cyber frontier that we were playing around in back in those days. And um, today, I have, I've been feeling since I've been working with We the World that this has been the creation of the test kitchen without, within that same context. And so that was the reason that I wanted um, Carrie to join me in this because she was one of the, I guess, we, what were we called? I think like founding members or founding pioneers or something. Um, well, that, that feels weird to say it now. It's just like, <laughs> you know, it just feels a bit weird. Um, but yeah, that was the thing. Like, you know, you were one of like the founders and Scary Birds and, you know, we were imagining Scary Birds as like a planet. <laughs> Or so was it a planet or a city or you know? I, I, sh I should tell people that, that we were we were trying to do these things when there wasn't any Facebook, there wasn't any Twitter, there wasn't any social media at the time. So um, we got told that we were a bit ahead of our time, which was all very well and good, but it wasn't really great at the time. So um, so yeah, so fast forward about twenty odd years, and then it's like oh, there's lots of things to play with now. So we're gonna <laughs> right. So we're trying again. <laughs> right because back then a lot of the problem was we had to build the things yeah. that we needed to do the the kind of projects and experiments we wanted to do right yeah. um briefly uh here uh progress is synonymous with eco-social sustainability as a priority and equity is a type of dish or um, that seems to, that is based on fair valuation of intangible assets and inclusion is a reference, a callback, back to radical inclusion, which we started out sort of touching on. Um, um, and so a couple of the key questions that um, we're looking to, uh, I don't know exactly what methodology we're going to be applying here. So it's not rooted in a specific belief system or methodology, aside from my, cult, my uh, soul food framework. Um, the people participating are coming from different schools of practice. Um, so that's part of the, we'll see what happens, what emerges here. But we will be looking at some key questions. And one is, what if those already exploring or ready to embark upon embodiment practices committed to applying our attention to the energy in the flow that wants to move progress forward? Um, that feels like a big thing to that really needs more attention, more exploration. And this is in contrast to continuing to give our attention in a way that keeps the attention flowing towards the opposition um, and, and what is seeking to like stop progress. And that's sort of where I feel that things are stuck right now is people um, reacting to that urgency, even though it's not been especially productive, and I agree it is an urgent situation, but the need for innovation doesn't go away because it's an, an important situation. So anyway, okay, the second question, what is needed to hold space for the energy of inclusion, equity, and progress? Because one of the things that I have noticed on, and observed as a facilitator and as a witness in different um, sessions across different practices is there really is sufficient attention to be able to create a container for 
Um, and generally what the attention goes towards is the opposition, which is racism. So that's part of what I'm looking at that, that's shifting things here is I'm interested in looking at how do we, um, what kind of energetic containers needed for inclusion? Racism isn't our problem. If you're about like, you know, leaving racism behind and fixing it and all the isms, what's the container for inclusion? Do you feel connected to that? Do you feel a part of holding that space? Those are the people that um, I, I'm hoping will say yes to joining us for this. And the last question is, how does it feel when these are required parts of the success buffet? So um, the embodied performance is about exploring these three questions. Um, and I really hope that people will sign up. And after this, I definitely would like to keep in touch. I am hoping this will not be a one-off event that we'll do this one and that I'll find a group of people who understand and are resonating with what I'm talking about here and would commit to doing several of these sessions. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, I think right now I feel I want to, I'd like a commitment to do four to seven and see what happens, um, specifically looking at these questions and what comes out of these questions. So if that's something that sounds like you'd be, you know, it'd be cool to check out and explore, um, sign up. We'll keep you posted and share the link to attend. Um, do let us know if you want to participate um, as an embodied performer or if you want to participate as a witness. Okay. So thank, thank you. you so much, Carrie. That's okay. Thanks, thanks for, for, for letting me know. Um, awesome. And that's the um, I'm looking forward to co-hosting with with Yvette. So if you if you sometimes like me, you know, I'm gonna wait understood the way she said, just come and see what's what. <laughs> <That's> there you <laughs> go. There you go. That's it. You don't have to know. This is all right. about not knowing. All I know is that these are the questions. Um, right, okay. So I've got something else to tell you, Yvette, while we stopped recording on that bit. Right. Like, so <laughs>
from 90% in 1995 to 30% in 2000. In 1981, he founded the Family Recognition Committee in Washington, DC. He has continued sharing his work via books and online projects, such as the Reverence for Life University. Uh, when you go to my website, you will see uh, his bio along with links to his website, uh, his channel, and there will also be a blog post spotlighting each of the people that we will be hearing from here. So next we will hear from Desmond with his breath, happy breath day, happy breath appreciation day. Whew. Okay, Carrie, I don't know if you remember, do you remember Desmond? Oh, you're muted. Yeah, yeah, I do, I do remember you talking about him, but I don't think I ever actually got in a conversation with the two of you. Okay, all right, to come, that's to come. All right, so here we go. We're gonna hear from Desmond. Please, consciously together, together, together. Yes, the more we breathe consciously together, it's the happier, healthier, wealthier, wiser, freer, sweeter, more satisfied, more secure, more harmonious, we will feel. For I am, you are, we are, we are our breath of paradise. I am, you are, we are, we are, we are our breath of paradise. I am, you are, we are, we are, we are our breath of paradise. I am, you are. We are our breath of paradise. And so we sing our chorus now. Breath Appreciation Day, everything breath. Everything breath, because everything is breath. Everything is its breath for without its breath without your breath without my breath no thing exists so when i say today is breath appreciation day i invite you to take take the time necessary to see to look at your breath Look at your breath in a new way, for your breath indeed is your God. Your breath is your God. My breath is my God. Our breath is our God. Our breath is the only thing that deserves to be called our God because it is giving us the life that we have. And in the scriptures, biblical scriptures, it says, and God breathed the breath of life into you and me. God breathed the breath of life into you and me. And we became living and we have been living since because God has been breathing ever since. God has never ceased breathing the breath of life into us and through us. And the only thing we can do really to add to the mix is appreciate, appreciate our breath. For our breath is the air we are breathing, the ether we're, we are consuming, the water, the fire, all of the earth frequencies, all of this is made possible by our breath, through our breath. 
So happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me and you and all of us. Happy birthday to me and you and all of us. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday to you and me and all of us. Yes, all of us. So have fun today, relax. Breathe consciously because that's how we appreciate our breath and know that you are your breath, your spirit, your God forever. Happy birthday to me. So just carry on singing now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, one of the things about Desmond is he really embodies that Jamaican spirit that we think of, of just, um, oh gosh, there's a song that I can't think of it. Um, uh, everything is still everything. Right. Um, I think it's by the Morgan Heritage family. I believe to that song. But it's like everything is like, you know, Matt, it's like if my car breaks down in the middle of town, everything is still everything. Do you know what I mean? And I yeah. think that he really embodies that so well. And when I met Desmond, it was at a point in my life when I was really um, put off by any talk of religion. And the moments when we started to talk about like God and religion or the Bible, I, I was like, okay, I, you're not going to say anything that I want to hear right now. <laughs> um, and so he and I started off from that place. But the real gift of, of what Desmond um, teaches with the practice about conscious breathing is that um, no matter how bad things are, I think that that place of coming from recognizing that nothing is made, nothing is possible without your breath. If you don't have your next breath, what can you do? What is possible in your life? So that's where all of your potential is. And that coming from a place of appreciation of something of that basic level of what it means to be alive um, and realizing how profound that is, you know, it's not just some aside thing. It's a really big freaking deal. Um, and uh, it's, it seems so simple. It seems like such a simple thing. But if you really embrace it and internalize it, it totally changes the way that you look at everything. Like basically, at least that's been my experience with it, is it totally changed everything because I can always, um, you really understand like the baseline. I guess it gives you a new baseline. Does that mean anything for you, Carrie? Is that just like wah, 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 wah? No, no, that's fine. Because as I said, without any breath, you're basically dead, aren't you? So, um, exactly, exactly. Yeah. But we take it for granted, right? We, we, we take a lot of things for granted. Um, um, it's what you said about the religion okay. thing. It's just recently I've, I've come to learn that the people with different viewpoints, it's like having a, we're, we're living in parallel societies with parallel realities. So basically we've got to kind of try and find a way of sort of like, you know, connecting with those and at least having getting a foot in the door somewhere <laughs> right well i think that okay so one of the things we talk about like with radical inclusion when we talk about that and i remember back when we first started talking about this carrie the brouhaha was uh terrorism you know now mm -hmm. in america anyway we're very concerned with domestic terrorism so it's interesting how that's an interesting full circle moment but um when we were talking about radical, inclu radical inclusion, it terrified people then because I can't tell you how many people would say to me, but what about the terrorists? We have to keep the terrorists out. But if you put your attention on including people of goodwill, of including people who show up, you know, in a, in a, in a positive way, fully present, ready to serve, um, ready to be part of a better inclusive future, um, I don't know, I think those people self-filter out. 
that was one of the things that you and I were talking about back in the beginning of building community is the people who used to say wankers, call people wankers all the time. Um, the people who are um, less than ethical or whatever, get, they reveal themselves. And that was part of, remember the P2P movement? You know, we're looking at peer-to-peer -peer networks and transparency. Mm -hmm. And that was all the rage then. And we really thought that we were moving in that direction. And mm -hmm. then, you know, things took a different turn. Um, but the, the point of that is that when we talk about radical inclusion, it's very much rooted in that, that bit of uh, that tradition. I want to call it history because I guess it kind of is now. I mean, you know, the early 2000s for a lot of people was a long time ago. Um, <laughs> some people weren't even born. Um, they're watching this. Anyway, um, when you look at transparency and open source and what that kind of community building was about was that because of the transparency, people who are up to no good are very quickly revealed. People who are there to take advantage of other people are very quickly revealed. And so you don't have to have all of these guardrails and all this attention on keeping people out if you keep your attention on including the people who want to be included who want to be a part of what you know the positive work that we're doing um then that's how you get to radical inclusion so um that was kind of like how desmond helped me understand radical inclusion because he represented something that I thought I wanted no part of, but his back, his background was um, in theology. He was at one part, I think a, a bishop or reverend or something in, 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 a, in the church um, before he left to pursue his life's work. And um, I think that he represents somebody who has a more, I don't think he identifies as a Christian, first of all, it's one of many kind of belief systems, but I guess because he was raised in that, and he knows it so well, it's a constant point of reference, but he's also very inclusive. And I've met other people, I've met people who identify as Christian, but also very inclusive and open-minded and loving. And I feel, and they don't beat you over the head with their religion. They don't like tell you, right, you know, like, hey, my name is blah, 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 and I'm a Christian. It's just something that you find out over time. Um, so anyway, so that's just to say that Desmond was, uh, I guess, one of my big moves towards recognizing where I wasn't being inclusive. And um, the conversation that came from that, I developed a friendship with him and his wife. You saw her artwork in the background behind him. Um, and they are just amazing people. And she has really, um, I interviewed her a few times and she has some really great insights, and some really lovely writing about the work applied to issues of womanhood and sisterhood and motherhood. Um, and so they're just like really amazing people. So let's see, who is next? I forgot, let me see who's next. Um, I have like uh, gotten myself trapped in a view here and I couldn't get to what I needed to get to because I don't have this memorized. Perfectly imperfect, Carrie. That is what we're going for. Um, so the next person we're going to hear from is, um, oh, this is one of, this is my, uh, let's call her sponsoring partner or partnering sponsor, whichever one you like. Um, and she's going to do like a little introduction to body work and how that relates to intuition, which is a very important bit of embodied performance. And so um, my friend, Queen Michelle, she is, um, a uh, guide. She assists people with New Earth Living. She's a light worker, a way shore, a frequency cold holder. She's an author. Um, in her previous life, she was an educator. Um, and when she retired, she found that she, um, her, 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 what do you call it? Her pension was inadequate for her to maintain an adequate standard of living that led her to exploring her options and led to her moving abroad. And, um, I wanted to include Queen Michelle because, again, in, with this idea of radical inclusion and infinite possibility, a possibility is also to remove your attention um, and take it elsewhere. And she left the United States and took her attention to Mexico. And now she lives there and is building a wonderful life for herself. And that was what we connected around was, um, I have some plans to leave the country. And I think that is totally a justified response, um, you know, to the things that we see going on is to maybe spend a little less time in the US. So not for everybody, but for those who choose that, 
we're going to hear a little message from um, Queen Michelle about um, body work and how that can help intuition and some things to think about when we think about developing our intuition. Caleb, anytime you're ready. Anytime you're ready. That came out weird. Sorry. <clears throat> well, hey, good evening and welcome to Sip and Share on this Wednesday, Thanksgiving Eve. You've taken a few minutes to stop by and possibly sip with me and allow me to share. So thank you so much for joining me, your host, Queen D. Michelle. Um, you may have noticed, hey, look, no glasses. I've gotten so tired of the, the glare after, you know, reviewing these videos. I'm like, you know what? Let me try it without my glasses. We'll see how we do. Um, <laughs> the words are, my notes, the words are actually quite big. So maybe I can work without my glasses. If not, I will put them on because they're right there. Um, we're going to pick up uh, this week with the series, the three-part series that I started last week. The series is entitled, How's the Ride? And what I mean by that is, how are you riding? There's three ways that you can go about strengthening your intuition, which will help the ride be a lot smoother and you operate with a lot more ease when you are in tuned with your intuition or when you're able to sense communication from the universe uh, using your intuition, your innate intuition. Uh, there's three ways to strengthen it. It's through inner work, body work, and homework. Last week, we talked about inner work, and I explained that inner work is done through meditation. There's a lot of benefits to meditation and doing that inner work. Inner work consists of what's happening when you're meditating. That inner work, what's going on is healing. You're able to make inquiries to your soul self. You're able to receive answers. You receive inspiration. Uh, you receive clarity. And there's so many other benefits to meditating, aligning with your soul self that strengthens your intuition so that your flow is a lot better uh, and it's done you, as you navigate the human experience here. It's done with a lot more ease inner work through meditation. That was last week. This week is part two. And now we're going to talk about body work. Okay. Now, um, first of all, let's remember that intuition is being able to immediately have a knowingness uh, about any situation person, place, thing, any, anything um, through intuition, um, you, you have this knowingness uh, without having to consciously reason, okay? Think, right? It's, it's more of a feeling. And that's what uh, living consciously is all about. It's about feeling more so than it is using your egoic thoughts to navigate your human experience here. So um, inner work, body work, and homework. So we're going to move into body work. And body work means connecting on a cellular level with your body. You know, according to genetics home reference, the human body is composed of trillions of cells. They provide structure for the body, uh, take in nutrients from food, uh, convert those nutrients into energy. And remember, all is energy. 
and carry out specialized functions. These cells, talking about cells. Cells also contain the body's hereditary material and can make copies of themselves. Okay. Um, they provide the structure for the body. Um, and they also contain uh, over 200 different systems, cell systems in the human body, and they work cohesively together. Um, now, this cellular body and the relationship that you have with your cellular body and how you communicate with it can either strengthen or weaken your intuition. Now, if your physical body were a corporation, the cell systems are, look at it this way, the cell systems are like various departments. For example, stem cells would be a department, muscle cells, a department, bone, skin, etc. These are all departments of the cellular body okay um and the list that we do with our bodies is exhaustive think about it we pleasure it feed it bathe it exercise it groom it adorn it paint it pierce it pluck it wax it cut it stretch it pick it rub it pinch it, bite it, shave it, smack it. You're talking about our body. Ew. The human cellular construction of our body. So um, knowing that all these things take place, I'm sure while I was reading that list, uh, that you possibly could have added to it. Was there a word I didn't use that came to mind when I was reading that list? One word that most wouldn't think to add is listen to it. The actions that I spoke about are how one interacts with the physical body. However, consider listening through practicing meditative activities yoga, tai chi, qigong, and martial arts. There's also um, gardening. Gardening is a meditative activity. Hiking, exercising, knitting, crocheting, uh, painting, coloring, sculpturing, cleaning, vacuuming, washing, those can be meditative activities that connect you to the, your cellular body. I definitely recommend a stretching activity in the morning just to connect with your body. It's like you connect inwardly. You also connect outwardly to your physical body through your cellular construction of the body. So I'm wondering now, and I'm asking, number one, last week I gave you some homework and I asked you to meditate 10 minutes a day. I actually asked you to do it for 21 days. Have you started meditating? And now I'm asking you, what meditative activity do you regularly engage in? Now, I mentioned several. Any of those do you regularly engage in? And if you don't, it's time you start because in doing so, you will strengthen your intuition, become more aligned with your soul self and able to recognize hear the communication from source energy, the universe, when you are strengthened 
through your intuition. Inner work, body work, and homework. Next week, we'll talk about homework. What could mean homework? What is that about? Point. I'll let you know next week. I thank you so much for stopping in and um, spending a few minutes with me as I sip and share. So until next week, one light, one love. Take care, everybody. Oh, and have a wonderful Thanksgiving. See you next week. Okay, that was an old episode, obviously, um, but it fit with what I wanted for this. So that was the one I used instead of her most recent one. But anyway, um, Carrie, did you uh, see any of those, uh, pick up any things in that list that you already do well, well, in terms of meditative was, activities? Yeah, because like up until about three years ago, um, I didn't really have any meditative activities or and, and even though I tried, I tried with yoga, but I kept on falling over and kept on giggling. And um, that didn't go down too well in the class. And um, but I've been doing crochet for the past three years. And um, a friend of mine thinks I'm obsessed with it now, but I realize I go off into another world. But I have realized my, the knowingness that she spe speaks of and, and just knowing and feeling um, that's, that's been enhanced quite a lot. And in terms of departments, uh, the, the body and the cells being different departments, I do have a bit of a rubbish department. <laughs> but everything crap gets thrown into. I'll have a look at that later to see if I can try and tidy up and get, salvage something from the crap bin. <laughs> <laughs> there will be a spotlight on Queen Michelle, um, and it will include that video and a link to her YouTube channel and her website, and you can find her books. Uh, I think it's like Considerations of the Soul or For the Soul is the name of her book. And um, she helps people who want to move abroad. Um, mm -hmm. She helps you create your plan to get it done. Um, and she's quite good at it. Uh, so um, that was, uh, I, don't know, I don't know if Kaylin wants to chime in. Kaylin, do you just want to be a silent participant or? Do you want to chime in on these things? I'm good being silent. I uh, guess that means silent. So, so we don't get the double team. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> double team. Well, I, I, thought that, I thought that. I thought that. Sorry, I thought that he would want to like jump in, but I, I figured if he had something to say, he'd say he'd say something. But I didn't want him to think that I was excluding him in any way. Um, I just, uh, and I don't want anybody else to think that. I mean, people who don't know uh, that we all know each other. Um, anyway, moving on, uh, the next one. Okay, so now we're getting into the more, let's do it, let's try it out, let's test it. Um, so the first one is about 20 minutes long. It's a guided meditation. Following that, we're gonna have a couple of um, Qigong exercises uh, led by Master Teresa and her daughter, Jacqueline Chan. They're both from the Pure Land. Well, we'll I'll tell you more about that when we get to them. But anyway, so I just want you to prepare for what's coming ahead. And then we're gonna wrap things up in a little bit. Um, so we may not, I don't know if we're, we'll go quite until 6.30, but we are going to wrap things up with a story from my friend Gigi Bazong, uh, who does a sort of prayer story uh, about what we've been doing here. So we're gonna go a little bit deeper and for the next 20 to 23 minutes, we'll be doing a guided med meditation um, with Coco Pearl. And one of the things I want you to be prepared for is we're going to get grounded in our bodies and just the sense what's, see what you notice, you know, in your body. And we're going to um, use a little imagination and see if you can find um, some of these questions um, in your body, like in your own energy space um, as we're going. And so I will probably turn my camera off while we do this. We'll definitely mute myself in case my dogs come running through here again. And Caleb, when you are ready, 
uh, hit the button. So welcome to the convergence room and thank you to the presenters that started us, started us off here today. I'm going to introduce us to a way of presencing what's in our own bodies. Um, and it may include for you uh, bridging what's in your own body <clears throat> and what's out of your body. Uh, different people have different experiences. And it'll be like a guided meditation. Uh, you are invited to participate at whatever capacity you would like to um, listen to what your body is telling you and um, take care of yourself because I do not know what your path is. And so um, that, that's, where, that's where you hold a lot of power is knowing your own self. So start with breathing in and out. And just continue breathing in and out, letting your breath stretch out to be a little bit longer on the in breath, a little bit longer on the out breath. Stretching out that breath to a comfortable place and now I want you to feel your feet and uh, if your feet are on the ground or the floor just notice where your feet meet that support if your feet are not touching ground, you're invited to find a position that works to touch them on the ground, or you can just sense into that space below your feet and then below that into where the ground is. And so there, your feet are in contact with support. and just breathe into that support. Breathe in, breathe out. And I'm gonna invite you to take your attention up your legs to your knees. and then back down to your feet and the ground or the good earth below your feet. And then with your next in breath, you can take your attention up to your hips and perhaps your seat if you're seated And what do you notice here? Is there tightness? Is there some fluidity or movement? Is there fullness? Does it feel a certain temperature? It doesn't matter what you notice. And then let your attention drop back down to your feet, touching the ground, feeling the support of the good earth below them. And so from this spot, <clears throat> touching the good earth, 
I'm going to invite you to feel the back of your body. Sense into the back of your body, back of your neck, the back of your legs, the back of your head. And then imagine breathing and allowing your lungs to flood your spinal column with oxygen. And that oxygen circulates through your whole body. But imagine as you're breathing that your nervous system, which is protected by your spine, is receiving supportive nourishment. Breathing in and breathing out. Now let's track back down to our feet, touching the good earth below them, feeling the support of the ground. Breathing in and breathing out. In your body, if you can bring your attention to the top of your head and the space just above it, which is air, some kind of air where you are right now, connects through your head, down your spine, and your legs, into your feet, and into the ground. And this embrace of earth and sky with humans held in the middle is a truth on earth wherever you are right now. The sky and the earth are holding you in their embrace. Now, I'm just going to invite you to feel your feet and your head and your hands. and the container that your body is. And this container can be a roadmap. It can be an encyclopedia. It can be a bridge between you and another, or you and nature. This container may have sensations arising in it. And it's okay to notice them, and it's okay to let them go. What I am curious about right now is in your container, 
right now. Can you feel the sensation of being included? Does it have a movement or a color or a shape or a location? Again, it doesn't matter what the answers are. These are just inquiries for you to explore. Um, and returning to the container of your own body. Can you feel something in your body when you resonate with what is equitable? Do you notice a sensation? Maybe you notice no sensation, which is another way to notice. So oh, breathing in and breathing out. There's one more inquiry and it's a curiosity about a spark when you want to move forward, when you are feeling progress where do you feel that spark? Or do you see the spark but not feel it? Or is, or is it hidden and not able to discern exactly where or what the spark feels like right now? So returning to the container of your body, um, let's sense our feet. I'm pausing because I have to go turn off the chime. Sorry, Yvette, I'll be right back. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> so feeling your feet touching the ground, feeling the support of the earth, rising up in your body and feeling the support of your spine. And allowing your tension to go up into your head, to the very top of your head, where it touches the sky. And you can imagine the sky as being just the smallest millimeter right above your scalp. You can imagine the sky being whatever the space is above your head to the ceiling of the room you may be in. 
You can imagine the sky being connected to the entire atmosphere of Earth. And if you want to go further than that, you could touch into space and our universe and sky holds a lot. And right between the good earth and the expansive sky are our hearts. Can you rotate your shoulders or twist your ribs a little bit to just kind of feel physically in your body that space where your heart is held carefully in the center of your chest. And then just breathe in and breathe out. Being with that tender heart space. With that courageous heart space. With that heart space that sometimes is afraid. And sometimes needs a layer of protection. It's all welcome. Our hearts brave and vulnerable, held in the middle of our bodies, in between the supportive ground and the expansive sky. Being with your heart, imagine a time you were by a flowing river or on the shore of a lake, maybe by the ocean, but you saw ripples on the water. You saw ripples on the water. Can you feel ripples? flowing out of your heart. Can you feel the buoyancy of a heart that's completely safe between earth and sky, held gently and safely inside the center of your chest and connected, connected to all the parts of you, connected to the supportive ground. connected to the sky and connected to others as you walk through the world. And if we imagine 
being by the water in our bodies and looking at the water flowing. Something's coming towards us on a raft. And do you notice how you're feeling inside? Are there any sensations? A color, a temperature, a shape, an emotion as this raft comes closer. What Um, what is the energy? What is the ingredient? What is becoming more clear as part of what wants to help you move forward? It's floating and Sometimes a mist rolls in and then you can't see it. So it's okay to give it time to become clear. Sometimes it floats so fast by you on the wave that you can't clearly see it. It will come back again. Other times it might just float slowly into the center of your view, your inner view, and let you take it in completely. Whatever arises is welcome. And whatever sensations are part of your body's wisdom And whenever it floats away, it's okay because you will remember. Your heart knows. Your container that holds your heart in the middle of your chest, your body, your body knows. And here today, between the earth and sky, you have made a different kind of contact with your inner landscape. When you're ready, uh, you can wiggle your toes. You can wiggle your fingers. If your eyes were closed, I invite you to slowly open them with a soft gaze and allow your focus to become more clear. And Thank you for trusting me to walk you through this meditation today. Enjoy the rest of the offerings here. I think she's falling asleep, Colm. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. I was wondering if you had fallen asleep. <laughs> That's that's the trouble with meditation no, though. Sometimes when you when you, 
when when you have well, 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 me personally, when <laughs> I'm trying to do these meditations and stuff, and then you just like start snoring after a while, you know. <laughs> oh, I find it's more of an issue um, when I do meditate at night. Mm-hmm. So what I tend to do once I lay down is just start to do like things that I appreciate or something like that or affirmations or something. Um, and then I feel okay if I fall asleep. But the other thing with this one was I wanted to make notes. So I made like a couple of notes of, of things. Um, did you notice anything? Like when she um, asked, like, did you feel like inclusion anywhere in your body or anything like that? Or equity or the spark of progress? Did you I, I, feel... think, I, think, I think the spark of progress, really. I think that's- You felt that's something? What, yeah, because things have been rumbling. Oh, since we last spoke and things have been kind of taken off in all sorts of directions which it wasn't expected so it's definitely um but i mean did you feel it in your body could you feel that in your body anywhere or... um well I, I was getting a bit mesmerized watching watching the trees <laughs> yeah just, that was the point I right was just, i was just getting was lost to... lost in the trees and the, the river and that and i was just like oh look I, I could watch that all day and, and it was i'm listening to her voice and i'm like and i was trying to close my eyes and it felt weird because we're on zoom and we're meditating and as i said because i'm not used to doing that it's just like it just felt weird um, but yeah, I just felt like oh, oh okay. and, and and I I just wanted to sway in the breeze with the trees. <laughs> well, you should do that. <laughs> but that's I, what I, I call tree dancing. That's what right. I would do when I was out in the garden when you would make fun of me. Right, See, okay. now you understand why it's so mesmerizing. Right. Okay. I let you know that. <laughs> but that is what tree dancing is. When right. I would go and watch the trees dance, I would watch. And when you're looking up underneath, it really is. So I'm glad you had that response to it. Yay. Yay. Um, uh, so, okay. So I, I do meditate a bit. I've been meditating for years. Um, I started meditating when I was 17, 16 or 17. Um, and so uh, what that, that exercise is really about developing the intuition to first be able to um feel discern what sensations in the body and then to decipher them to be able to interpret them and so when she asked about inclusion the body um i thought i felt like that feeling of when you get like a really nice hug and you just rest your head on the person's shoulder or chest depending on how tall they are um that was what that felt that's what inclusion felt like for me equity which was really interesting um uh, people that know me well know that uh, massage is like, you know, my religion, um, not as a practitioner, as a recipient. <laughs> and, um, I have like, I've all, I've had like chronic shoulder neck tension. I mean, it's gotten better the last few years, but um, there was a time when my shoulder muscle, what's the trapezius, I think it's called, um, felt like a bone. It was so like tense. It was hard. So it was interesting to me was equity. I felt my shoulders relax. And it reminded me of that expression of having a chip on your shoulder. Um, so I thought that was interesting. And the spark of progress, I felt felt like a warmth in the solar plexus area. So I am saying that partly to document it for myself in case I lose this piece of paper where I made this note. Um, so I need to put that in my research journal. Um, and I didn't bring it in, I didn't bring it back in here. I left it wherever I was last writing it. Anyway, um, if anybody else has any experiences with that that you would want to share with me, uh, please feel free to like share them. Um, you can email me. I don't know how many people are watching us live, but you know, Carrie and I always have a good time together. So that was sort of the spirit I think we brought <laughs> yeah, to this. Yes, yes. <laughs> Welcome to the Kenny and Yvette show, but we're going live and in public. <laughs> I was going to say to Yvette, you can leave the tales about the massage for the after dark version. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's that kind of massage. Oh, that's <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, Yvette. I couldn't help that. 
it was just it was just too good to too good to an opportunity to pass off you know <laughs> yes yes yes, yes embarrass me why don't you <laughs> um <laughs> Oh, okay um so that was coco pearl didn't she have a great voice for that oh i i would absolutely love to be able to have a voice and be able to speak like that because um yeah because some people have a really good voice like because some <laughs> he's a laugh he used to say you know when you'd have a face for radio and a voice for silent movies <laughs> i think that <laughs> I think that's me, you know what I mean? It's just like, you know, and you just listen to some people that's just like, oh, and then I have for me, me go up and then it's like, oh no, will you please shut your face? Um, yeah. <laughs> I think we all have to, I think we all have to learn to appreciate our voices. And you know what helped me was um, if you think about if you lost your voice, how much you would miss the voice that you now disparage you would miss it incredibly if you didn't have it, right? Oh, 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 totally. No, I totally agree with that because see when I'm I'm sending text messages or, or messages via messenger and that, and sometimes I just like, just let me speak to you in person because I find it really hard trying to find the words to write down. So then <laughs> I end up saying nothing. And then it's like, oh, and but like I can, I can talk the legs off donkeys. And I can have chats like this and it's great. But see when I have to sit down and write things down and try and explain things in writing. And then you'd end up sort of like, because you get so tied up in what words you're going to use. Whereas I, I just let it fall out. But yeah, I, yeah, I actually would miss not being able to talk. You know, I think that'd be hor horrendous. Right? You know, so as, as much as I slag off my accent and I were talking it's... that, um, I would really miss it. I'd really miss it. I would miss it. I would miss your voice. Uh -huh. um, it really helped me to like take take that kind of like line of thinking with it. Because I when I did the first podcast like many, 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 many years ago, or 2007 or something like that. And I remember a few people like emailed me afterwards, just people I would encounter to ask if I was doing it again and like they missed my voice. And I thought like that was the weirdest thing. Um, cause I could never listen back to those episodes because I thought I sounded like people are going to think I'm a man. My voice is so deep. And, um, I had decided over the years, I've decided to stop working on my accent back when I used to do voice work. Um, like, uh, you know, whatever it was, um, you know, answering service, like when you call the answering systems, mm -hmm. they give you, uh, <laughs> disease symptoms to worry about while you're on hold. Um, I used to do that kind of thing. And so I really worked on neutralizing my accent and uh, I would avoid certain words that were harder for me to manage. But over the years, it's like, I'm just like, fuck it, you know, I'm just going with it. Um, and, you know, it is what it is and embracing, you know, who you are, you know, it's only you that you have and you might as well learn how to love and appreciate it. So, um, we will be hearing more from Coco Pearl for sure. Um, Cause I am definitely gonna rope her into some more stuff. I love her voice. And when I am really upset or having, um, I need some help calming down. She is definitely one of the friends that I call and she will do that for me on the phone <laughs> and just help me like ground myself. <laughs> so she is like the best, I love her. Um, okay, so next point to hear, from Master Teresa Jung and her daughter, um, Jacqueline Chan. Uh, master Teresa is internationally recognized a, as a modern master of Qigong. Uh, she is also a speaker, a remote healer, a thought leader, a three-time best-selling author. Uh, I'm sorry, a, a three-time number one international best-selling award-winning author. Um, her life's purpose has been helping people to reclaim balance and overall wellness in their lives, especially women. She's developed a new women's issues, Qigong, to help them balance their indoctrine, reproductive, and yin-yang energy in their body. Um, I am actually very interested in that. I signed up for it and I missed it. 
Uh, so anyway, uh, Master Teresa is the founder of the Pure Land International Qigong and the Seventh Happiness School of Qigong. Both are certified private institutions in Canada. She is the sole successor of Grandmaster Wu Xiao Wu lineage. I hope I got that name right. If not, I'm so sorry. Um, Wu was a distinguished Qigong master, educator, and creator of the highly successful, highly successful Wu Yi Qigong, I Qigong. Wu I Qigong is the Qigong for the eyes. Um, it, and it's helped millions of people around the world. And she's also approved by the United States National Certification Commission for Acupuncturists and Oriental Medicine as a continuing educational provider, I'm sorry, continuing education professional development activity provider. Ooh. Um, Jacqueline is based in Toronto and has been leading Qigong practices in Pure Land International Qigong and has also um, taught in conferences such as the Mindful Society of Can the Canada, a Kindful Nation. She has been regularly teaching um, at Sick Kids Hospital Wellness Center for two years now. Um, from five years old, Jacqueline has started to practice Qigong when her mother was also learning from her teacher, Grandmaster Wu. For 12 years, she joined almost every single class offered by Master Wu until his crossing in all levels, um, which he passed away, he died, uh, his physical body died. As he was like a grandfather in their home, she also learned his philosophies of life, watching how the school has been growing and expanding to touch the world, starting from the basement of her home. She is a Qigong instructor, trainer, Fa Chi practitioner, Pure Land uh, International Qigong, certified instructor of the Wu Ying Qigong. Uh, with experience in Qigong for over a decade, she teaches from a millennial's perspective with a master's in childhood education and psychology degree and a clinical research staff by day. She understands that using relevant language to demystify this ancient practice is as important and this is, is, an, uh, is an important bridging between the two schools of thought. Jacqueline can help guide you through a mindful Qigong practice and therapy using Psych K process, which is another one of her certifications. So, uh, Calum, let it roll. Oops, that's, uh, that's Gigi. There you go. Awesome. And so Jacqueline and I, we want to show you a little bit on how you can energize, relax yourself, feel good with something very simple to do. So, so life is about enjoying what's happening with us. Our body, our mind, they all work together. Something very simple could be relaxing, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, slow down the breath and breathe out. We can add a little bit extra to the breath work as you can think about breathing in like the universal energy. And then when you breathe out, you can think about breathing the stress you have now. Say if you're stressed in the head, breathe in, oh, relax, head, neck, breathe in, relax, neck, release stress in the neck, shoulders, breathe in, relax, shoulders, release stress in the shoulder, tightness in the shoulders, chest, breathe in, release, stress in the chest. We have our heart, we have our lungs, breathe in, release, stress. Our abdomen, breathe in, breathe out, release, stress in the abdomen. Back, breathe in, reduce stress in the abdomen, the whole back, 
breathing reduce stress in the back breathe in breathe out so reduce stress from head to toes breathe in breathe out when we relax we like to relax from head down the body all the way down as you keep on relaxing down more and more to the feet. So it's like you ground the negative energy in your body. And this is very uh, much like the mind connecting with the universe and the mother earth. Relax to the feet. And we can think about difficult energy. Just let it go out to the floor. As we relax, we just keep on training ourselves how to release things. Release is a practice and release to the earth. So this is the beginning of uh, a Qigong practice, which is the mind with the body, connecting with a few breath, and it could have a few more movements. So let me um, invite Jacqueline, my daughter, also practicing Qigong with me like over 20 years now. And she likes to uh, share some of her insight with you. Hello, everyone. So Qigong, it can be done sitting or standing. There's often different movements. And we use the breath work. It's very nourishing, very gentle. So I want to say that it has been supported by research. So I do teach Qigong at the Hospital for Sick Children as well and through my mom's uh, school, Kirlan Qigong. And, you know, research shows that Qigong and, and Tai Chi has actually been very effective for things like depression, anxiety, cardiovascular issues, and also it helps in the recovery of musculoskeletal conditions as well. And just really quickly here, neuroscience shows us that we have three brains. We have our mind. There's a lot of neuroactivity there. We also have the heart, which, which also has a lot of neuroactivity. And lastly, we have the gut. But how many of us pay attention to our heart brain and our gut brain? So in the practice of Qigong, you'll find that we actually are moving our attention or the chi out of our active mind down into our heart and more importantly, down into our gut and bringing in our lovely intentions. We're sending loving and healing energy to the body. So we can't go in so in depth uh, in these next few minutes about the practice, but we can do a couple of movements just to, just to release a little bit of that stress or a little bit of that tension that we're holding on to. Okay, so thank you, Master Teresa, my mom, for leading us through, through a relaxation. Let's do a really simple practice. And many of us are at the computer. So again, you can do the sitting or standing. We often, we often do a combination of the both. Okay, but right now we're just going to, again, um, just taking a breath, okay. And we're just going to lift up our shoulders really simply. So many of us are holding the world on our shoulders. And we're just going to lift up our arms. And we're going to move our palms forward. And all we're going to do is we're just going to bend over and just drop all the weight of the world just on the floor, releasing the neck, just breathing. Slowly coming up. And let's do that a few more times. You might be aware of certain aches in the body. So arms up and bending forward again. Dropping that weight to the floor. Again, slowly coming up. And just one more time. Arms up, breathing, and just dropping to the floor, just using our intention. And 
slowly coming up. Okay. okay, so we're just getting that oxygen and blood moving. And really quickly here, let me show you one little brief exercise, okay? And Master Teresa, feel free to chime in at any time. We're just gonna start um, introducing ourselves to the idea of energy, universal energy, earth energy, energy in the body, subtle energy. <laughs> All we're gonna do is gonna bring our arms down in front of us. And this is called Lai He in Chinese or pulling chi. All we're gonna do is we're just moving the arms like they're underwater or like a jellyfish, okay? Wiggle the fingers a bit. Sometimes when we work at the computer, it's like we become one with the computer. But it's important to remember we have a body. So we're just going to move the arms open and close. Breathing in and out. And gently wiggle the fingers. So that's one vol, Jacqueline. Just uh, one more thing we'd like to show the audience is sometimes when, if you're walking, then you can also swing your arms and then you can do some breath work uh, with the arms moving. Could we just breathe in and then breathe out? And then when you walk, you know, in the park, then you just breathe in and breathing out. So this helps the lungs and help the heart move the energy, the lungs, meridians, they are in the arms, the heart, meridians, they are in the arms too. So moving arms can be a very healing, help the lung, help the breast, help the digestion. It can be so simple. So I wish you learned something uh, from us. So if you if you'd like to follow us more, we do have a YouTube channel and uh, and other things that you can uh, join us. Just check the website. Thank you. All the best. I was not going to say anything, Master Teresa, but you know, I was going, yeah. I was having a little arm pain um, um, earlier. <laughs> and okay. I was doing this with you. Yeah, yeah. My shoulder was, oh, okay. I'm, I don't know what had happened, but anyway, and it's better anyway. So I just wanted to just, just doing that with you guys, oh, just okay. doing that, following you. Doing that with you, collecting um, the we can, uh, we can actually say one more thing since you bring uh, the pain out. We just say it here. Um, okay. So I say sometimes we have some aches and pain in the body, right? So instead of just thinking uh, having pain and get a pain pillar, <laughs> so I'll just say sometimes we have pain in the body. So the way we mm -hmm. actually use Qigong to help with pain. It's about letting go the pain through relaxation, right? So we can relax, yeah. say the arms hurting, keep thinking about relax the arms, relax the arms, relax the arms, relax the arms. Even just think about how you can relax the arm, like a few minutes, five minutes. It can be very rewarding as you learn to control um, how you feel and how muscle circulation works together. And it can be very healing. We actually do have a, a Qigong we put down on the YouTube on pain too. <laughs> just, just in case someone actually really needs to help there. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. We, we will have those links um, in the email and um, on the yeah. website as well. Yeah, so, so just thank encourage you. people really. So they feel there's something uh, that was nice, but uh, people always have pain. So to, to mention, uh, to remind, talk a little bit on pain is helping them. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, what'd you get from that one, Carrie? 
Uh, well, that, that was interesting. Um, as I said, I was a bit worried about smacking my head on the on, the, on my desk. <laughs> just said. So no, say, no, you no, know what? that I, really works. Yeah, yeah. But what what I would say, um, because I'd never kind of done any of that before, so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna rewatch and and do it while I'm not at the computer. Um, awesome. You know what I mean? So look, I will you, say when people, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I was just saying, look, look what you're doing to me, Yvette. <laughs> it's been many, many years. It's taken a long, long time. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> um, but, you know, that really helps when you um, have, like, a lot of tension in your shoulders from being, or just your back is stiff from sitting at the computer. And I have, like, a couple of work tables besides my laptop cart. And I've done that, like, just at the table. Stop at the table or the laptop, you know, um, as well as in the morning when I get up. Um, those are all really good to do. And the uh, gathering chi exercise, they have a really good five minute um, beginner version of that. That's yeah. really great that that was what I started with. Um, and I met Master Teresa several years ago. Um, God, it'd be like four, three or four years ago. I can't remember, maybe five years ago. Oh, time flies. Um, but when I, I met her and I shared this story when we were recording, I think she might have, she's going to use it for um, her website, but I wasn't going to include myself in that, that video, but I felt that, well, the point about the pain, because my shoulder was actually hurting yesterday. And after we did that, it wasn't hurting anymore. And I was like, I probably shouldn't mention that because, you know, there's going to be, you know, so many people. But when I first met her, um, it was the beginning of me I don't want to say quitting caffeine, but significantly cutting back my caffeine. And at that point, I was still having the migraines. Like if I didn't have sufficient caffeine intake, I would get these migraine headaches. Um, and so they had taken the coffee away. It was at a, a retreat or something. And um, they had taken the coffee away and I was starting to panic and freak out because I was literally falling asleep. Like if I didn't have coffee, by like one o'clock, I just like fall asleep in the middle of a conversation. And so somebody told me, um, I met Master Teresa earlier, but very briefly, but somebody told me to go and ask her to give me energy. And I was like, that is a really weird thing. to Just walk up to somebody that you barely know and say, and I didn't want to. And eventually I did. And um, it totally freaking worked. And that was like, I'd seen videos about Qigong and I've known people who, who practice. Um, Ron's wife, I mean, well, girlfriend, sorry, not wife. Um, Ron's girlfriend, Anita, is a Qigong um, instructor, Carrie. Right, okay. Um, okay so I don't know if you remember Anita? Yeah, yeah. I, um, I definitely want to look more into this. And um, um, I'm telling you, like, it got me interested. Because um, right. I was like, wow, okay. if you can help me, like, survive without caffeine... Um, I was like, how did that work? Like what just happened? And she emailed me the five minute video. So I'll send that to you, okay, um, thanks. later and you can like check that out. So it was, um, so that was the beginning. And so I've had like several sessions with master Teresa and I've gone to some of her, her workshops and stuff. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's really quite amazing and brilliant. And I'm very impressed with Jacqueline. Um, she's a very impressive young woman. And so I'm really looking forward to doing more with them. Mm -hmm. And um, if there's anybody else out there, you know, that's interested in Qigong, definitely like get in touch, like follow up and check out their stuff. And I'd love to hear about your journey and your experience with that. And now we're about to wrap up. We're almost done. All right. Our last feature is going to be Gigi Bisson. Um, Gigi is the creator of the Embodied Ally Program. She's a public speaker, a storyteller, um, a lovely, lovely person, um, a good friend. Uh, and Gigi is also, uh, she's involved in helping people find their life purpose. Um, that's the focus of her coaching practice. She's an author. She helps women and you find their unique purpose so happiness and passion can fill every area of their lives. She believes our main purpose in life is to be fully present in the moment and to infuse love into everything we do. She believes that in every suffering, there is a lesson that will propel us forward far beyond 
our wildest dreams if we so allow it. She also believes we are always being guided and we just need to become aware and open to that guidance. And you can find out more about Gigi at litbymiracles.com or ggthesong.com. Again, uh, you'll find her links at my website and I will be doing a little spotlight piece on her well, where you can maybe check out another one of her videos. And I'll be doing some stuff with Gigi um, later. So if um, any of this is of interest to you, please, please stay in touch with us. Okay, anytime you're ready, Kayla. There is a beautiful thread that is reaching from every single one of us, from the roots, from our feet, all the way through the crown of our heads, connecting this thread that is woven between every single one of us that are here on this call listening in. And even though we might not even see each other or know of each other, the threads that are running through us are very much linked. They are linked beneath the soil that we stand on, deeply embedded in Mother Earth, the earth that we call our home, the earth that we water, that we nourish, that we adore. And this thread is connected, connected to the seeds of the ancestors that had walked barefoot on this land long before we were even born. And they all held stories that were deeply embedded in their bellies, in their wounds, stories that they would speak of in their native tongue, stories that they would sing and dance with one another in community and in celebration. And even though some of us might not be connected to those stories or even to our ancestors, we might think that we're not connected, but there is a connection that is running through us. There's a connection that is running through us, a connection of deep remembering, a connection of sovereignty, a connection of love. And even as we don't know each other personally, there's a mirror that we almost have in our eyes. Our eyes can see to the depth of each and every single one of our souls. Even though that this reality that we live in has divisions and separations and has systems and structures and constructs that has divided us and has made us into enemies and has created these ideas of wars that have not only put blood on our bodies, but have has put blood into the holes and the wombs of Mother Earth. Mother Earth is crying and screaming and asking for us to come back to our roots, to our love, to our connection to the soil, the connection to that thread that's running between every single one of us, that connection that connects to our ancestors of the roots, of their sovereignty, of their wholeness, reminding us in those threads of who we are and why we were created why we are here in this lifetime and letting us know that even though our feet are connected and standing on the soil and on the ground that they used to stand on, they are also singing these songs to us in our ears, letting us know that we stand on different soil, that right now we can actually afford to create a new reality, a new pattern, a new way of being, a new way of connecting with one another. They're letting us know at every beat, it's almost as if they're beating these drums and asking for us to dance with them so they can speak to us, letting us know that we can create a new reality, that we don't have to pick up the old patterns that have been handed to us, that there is a new pattern. And that pattern actually has been inside of us all alone. It is that thread that's running through us, that thread that's connecting to the depths of Mother Earth, that thread is holding the vibration the visions, the creations of a new reality, a reality that is rooted in love and of really seeing every single one of us at our core, the core of our hearts, the hearts that are inside of us that are meant to create these beautiful new ways of showing up in our world and showing up for one another. And those creations are not in the systems and the constructs that we might see today, but they are within every single one of us. And there's a new reality. There's a new reality that we are birthing and they are speaking to us at every beat. And you can almost tap your feet on mother earth and connect to that drum beat, connect to that rhythm. And I ask you right now, what is that rhythm that you are hearing? 
What is that rhythm that is asking to be birthed through the soles of your feet? Be with it and listen to it and enjoy it and allow it to express itself through you. There's this blessing that is happening in this time and space and reality as we're all showing up, eyes wide open, ears open, and our creativity and our hearts are wide open. There's this blessing that they are giving us, our ancestors and Mother Earth, a blessing that is saying thank you. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for holding your hearts in such a place where you're able to receive messages and medicine from all women and all men of different walks of life, that you are able to look at them deeply in their eye, connecting past all the visions and the ideas that others might see of who they might be, but really connecting to the truth of them. And that right there, that is the blessing. The blessing is in that possibility, that possibility that we hold inside of us as this new vision, this new creation that we are creating. And the only way to create that creation is to tap into that thread that is within us and to allow it to speak to us and to feel it and to marinate in its magic. And we say thank you. And we say thank you for showing up and thank you for placing your feet on Mother Earth and for listening and for dancing and for moving. It's all so beautiful as we observe all of the magic that is happening around us. But it's even more so beautiful as we actually say thank you to all those that have passed and had came by in this lifetime and who have fought the wars and have cried the tears, those who have fell down to their knees their knees were bleeding and they were crying for mercy and doing all of the things that they needed to to release oppression in their bodies and in their communities. And they have done the deep work. And we say thank you. We say thank you and we hand the torch over to our brothers and sisters. And we decide to go on to a new path. A new path because now we are standing on new soil that we have a new connection to a vibration that maybe wasn't being able to be connected to before. But we are able to tap into that. And what I ask of you is what is next? What is next, brothers and sisters? And we can rejoice in that possibility and in that creation as we grab our paintbrushes and our paints and come together and create this new reality for us, for our children, for our communities, and for those that come after us that we don't even know their name. But we know that they soon will also be standing on the soil, connecting as well to Mother Earth, connecting to that thread that's running through us. They too will have a connection of that thread. And so what are we creating with that thread? That is the possibility. And we thank you. And we thank you for showing up. And may we be blessed and continue to be in that deep spirit of sovereignty, remembering why we are here and what our path is and remembering what our creations are and remembering to hold on to that paintbrush and remember not to be painting alone, but to paint in community, knowing that with each stroke that I make, you also make your own stroke. And together we are creating this new vision and this new image. And it's a beautiful artistic expression of that thread connection to Mother Earth, to our ancestors. And with each stroke of that brush, we are blessing and thanking them. And we're blessing our future. Well, wow. what'd you think of that one, Carrie? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Oh, so you're muted. I'm mute. Yeah, yeah. So just, I just keep forgetting to unmute yourself. Um, yeah, no. that 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 was kind of interesting. It was because everything she's saying about being connected uh, with the people showing up. Um, because as I said, things have been rumbling on, and I think last week I've there's this really strange feeling I got. You know, when you feel everywhere and nowhere at the same time, and it was just like you know, and um, and. This 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 will amuse your event no end, right? I was invited to go and do a session with this lady called Angie. Called for, and I didn't know what she was doing. 
So it was all about gratitude and DJ and movement and middling and everything. And I thought, oh, if Yvette could see me now. Um, and it was really good fun. Uh, and, and, and it was excellent, you know what I mean? So, so yeah, so I'm kind of, everything's wearing off on me now. Um, you know, so, um, but yeah, I'll, I'll maybe speak more about that another time. But um, yeah, so things are, are kind of, you know, before, like years ago when I tried to do anything, I always had a big resistance in terms of what I was doing and nobody um, nobody got what I was talking about most of the time. And it's frustrating because you've got all these ideas in your head and, and you know, and then they'll say, oh, make a plan. And I'm, like, oh, I'm telling you, would you help me make that plan? <laughs> so I was... I, what I was trying to bring in and what I'm trying to usher in, that is it about inclusivity and everything else and opportunities and equality of opportunities right. and equity and everything. My friend, Suzanne, who I'd known for 30 odd years, who I stayed with last night, Ev, she's known me over, I think, nearly 28 years she's known me. And oh. I was telling her my idea for what was coming. And she said, you know what, Kerry, in all the years that I've known you, I really like this idea. <laughs> Just she said, this is a real nice idea. And I wish you well, Anna. Is there anything I can do to help Say you? Hi. you Say hello. I mean? Say hello. hi, Kerry. Hello. Say his sweet face. So, so yeah, so, so all, all those years of knowing her, and this is the first time since I've known her, because she normally just Previews everything, just like oh, Kerry, you're, you're off on what I get, aren't you? Um, and she said, No, this is really nice what you're doing, and I wish you well. And uh, if there's anything I can do to help, and I, and I was like, I was a bit stunned, really. And, and over the past, I'd say three months, four months, people, or maybe even a bit longer, um, when I've been telling people my ideas, they're like, where do I sign up? And I, I was just like, oh, 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 I'm gone. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not used, but it's it's just the people who are showing up. Um, and it's right about what so you can we can we does up. this mean that you have bought it, you you are a believer now that when you change your in inner landscape, um, that the outer landscape does indeed change? I would have to say yes, I am a believer now. When I saw her face, I'm a believer. <laughs> so without Carrie knowing it, I have been like dragging her through this personal innovation process for like over 10 years. Um, but now that she's here, I mean, even the joy in your face. I mean, look, look at how much you smile. I remember the day that we, we talked um, one day after you had lost your job, you'd left your job. And you were very passionate about what you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And you were lamenting the money issue. And I suggested that you just let go of the how it might come and focus on what it was. You remember we talked about? And then um, maybe a day or so later, you like, messaged or called me to tell me that you had a sponsor for a year to yeah. work out your plan. Yeah, yeah. Right? That yeah. was kind of a miracle. And I told you, it's like, miracles happen. Just let go and let's see what happens. And then something really amazing happened and it just keeps happening, right? Yeah, my, my friend Leanne is a bit more detailed and, I, and she's like, oh, but Kerry, but you need to think of this. And I'm like, I am not afraid. I shall not be worried. And I thought, well, you know what? If it's six months time, none of it's worth, then at least I'll know I've tried and uh, I'll, I'll need to do something else you know but, but um it's been amazing over the past uh as i said we've actually i've actually got a place in edinburgh right. called, called the santosa which is a health and wellness place oh hold it i just realized time wise we're 6 oh, yeah. okay so oh, we're right, gonna okay. wrap and carrie and i are going to continue our conversation without mm -hmm. you guys um uh, right. but if you want to like you know get on what we're about and what we're doing um connect with us uh, we the World has a membership of over 30,000 around the world. If you are interested in volunteering or um, applying for an internship, go to we.net. If you're interested in this project specifically, go to 
webantiphon.com, W-E-B-A-N-T-I-P-H-O-N.com. And if you can't remember that, then look me up online and we'll work it out. We'll figure it out. Have a great night, people. Bye. Carrie, I'm hitting you up on WhatsApp. Okay. (laughs)